Hi everyone, my name is Tildor Mitev and in this short lecture I will discuss the prototyping stage in developing digital artifacts. This is the fifth lecture in my series on digital artifacts following the lectures on uh, thinking, observing, defining and ideating. As a reminder, in the lecture on thinking we discuss getting started with conceptualizing a project and following that in the observation stage we examined ways to finding, observing and understanding your users. Uh, in the defining stage, we discussed the production of a definitive problem statement. And in the ideation stage, we talked about generating a wide spectrum of ideas to address the problem statement. Uh, needless to say, this stage is a part of a continuous process. It's a continuous developmental process, which is iterative. Um, and builds around a feedback loop with your users. All right, so immediately following from the ideation stage, uh, we have uh, the stage of prototyping. And in this stage of your developmental process, you make tangible physical models of the problem solutions you generated in the ideation stage. So for the rest of this lecture, I will focus on discussing uh, the process of prototyping and uh, uh, giving you some pointers on how you should approach this. All right, but before we go there, uh, I need to take a step back and remind you how we ended up with the previous lecture, the process of ideating. As a reminder, uh, you need to be able to generate a problem statement in your defining stage, which should look something like users, uh, some sort of starter pack, some sort of frame which you have observed, need some sort of verb that you have identified as, as a need and in reminder that uh, this statement should not be in the singular you should produce uh, at least three or four different versions of this trying to capture different uh, uh, needs trying to capture different insights because insight actionable compelling something that you can that you have identified and you can do uh, for your user something that you have observed in an audience um, reminder also that uh, when we talk about your users in your audience, naturally if you're starting a, pro a project from scratch, you will not have a set number of users audience. Your, your, your actual users will be zero. That being said, um, you, since you have identified a problem around specific needs and uh, uh, around specific insights, you should be able also to observe uh, user groups, audiences uh, congregating around uh, projects on similar problems, on similar uh, insights, operating on similar insights, uh, um, addressing similar needs. Trying, it's very important to try and observe how these audiences behave because this would be potentially your own users. All right. So uh, once you have that statement, uh, the second stage is asking how you can address that. Right? So how can I or how might we make something to address that statement. And uh, this is the, the key stage of uh, ideating where you try and generate a wide spectrum of ideas, pulling that statement in different directions, trying to cover a spectrum of possible approaches without evaluating your ideas, just generating them. So once you've done that, you are at the beginning of the prototyping stage, right? So you've generated a volume of uh, ideas and you need to produce something you need to prototype something in order to test and evaluate those ideas and by getting feedback a reminder and this is a really important point that you cannot evaluate your uh, possible solutions that you generated in the ideation stage without testing them and in order to test them you need to make something right so this is what the prototyping stage is all about uh, prototyping uh, the solutions that you have generated in the previous stage. Um, that being said, there is an important caveat here, which is that the process of uh, making those prototypes is already the beginning of a, a testing and feedback stage. Why? Because uh, usually the encounter with reality in the form of trying to make even a, a paper model, as it were, uh, of the idea or the experience of the solution that you're proposing to generate uh, is enough to give you a, a quick feedback on 
the viability of that uh, solution of that idea. All right, so uh, you've started prototyping. The first step that uh, I, I want to emphasize is that you need to start simple, uh, as simple as possible, uh, start drawing, start uh, uh, making mind maps of uh, how your content or whatever it is that you're making is going to be experienced by your users. How do you hypothesize this experience will look like? Um, once you have that, try and build a tangible model. So it's really important to make something with your hands, uh, a mock-up, if you will, or which, is, uh, which has a physical presence. Right? Even if, uh, let's say, you're creating podcast strand, make a physical prototype of how your podcast will be experienced by your users. Uh, better yet, try and make that physical prototype and test it with someone else than you, right? a friend or a relative, etc. Someone who can uh, give you an outside perspective of uh, that, that uh, solution and how it actually works with, uh, uh, with, with a potential audience. It's really important to operate on a, on, a, on a basis of simplicity here. So work with uh, things like post-it notes, uh, uh, sketch, paper, a random collection of objects even. It's, uh, the importance is not to build an accurate representation. Uh, and, you know, it's, if you're making a website, let's say, uh, or a YouTube series, it's pretty hard to make an accurate representation of those uh, from physical models. Uh, the, the importance is to create a physical illustration of the experience of whatever it is that you're making, of the experience of that solution, let's call it that way. Illustrate experiences with your artifacts. This is really important. Uh, it allows you to see, to gain that uh, additional perspective on uh, how your uh, content or whatever it is that you're making is going to work on users. Feel free also to uh, generate mockups from existing content. You are, use bits and pieces from existing content if you can find them. Obviously, there is a caveat here, which is that you should be using uh, Creative Commons content. Uh, don't use copyrighted content because obviously it's copyrighted and it's not yours. Um, use uh, Creative Commons content, which is uh, free, free to uh, remix uh, with attribution. This allows you to make a actual illustration or sort of close model, if you will, close prototype of uh, the kind of content that you want to make, right? So try and illustrate it that way and test it with potential users, with potential audiences. Uh, first test it with yourself also. Also test the production process, right? One of the really important aspects of prototyping is that you get early exposure in a very uh, hashtag fist, uh, fast and expensive, simple, tiny exposure to uh, what is involved in making this. Very often uh, students run into problems because uh, they've, uh, they've had a really polished, really ambitious idea, a uh, really coherent problem statement, which runs into the wall of the cost of making it, right? So uh, prototyping with uh, found materials, with existing content, allows you to very quickly ascertain whether this is actually doable and what are the costs involved in terms of not only software, but also time, uh, effort, uh, um, learning curve in terms of uh, uh, figuring out platforms, etc., etc. In that content, there is a great quote from Eric Raymond, the author of The Cathedral and the Bazaar, um, who is uh, also uh, one of the uh, early theorists of the open source movement and uh, um, sort of a, a coding guru, if you will. And uh, uh, he's also the author of uh, the release, early release, often open source mantra, which we have uh, changed for um, use to uh, fail early, fail often, as you know. So the quote by Eric Kramer is spending time looking for someone, someone else's uh, almost good enough is more likely to give you good results. Uh, finding the almost good enough and reusing it at least in your prototyping stage. Again, remember, use Creative Commons content. It's really important because it saves you a lot of time uh, in terms of getting started from scratch. So please make use of that. And importantly, prototyping should not uh, occur and uh, um, unfold in isolation. You should not be working in vacuum at any stage of your process, right? No, for starting from observing and going all the way to testing, uh, everything should be deployed 
uh, and in possibly in contact with users. Uh, this is uh, doubly important in terms of prototyping because you want to involve your users uh, with the model that you've made. Uh, you want them to engage and interact with it. Um, this is fundamental. Why? Because uh, this gives you a very uh, early and easy opportunity to ascertain whether your project uh, is doable and to figure out any possible issues before you've actually even started making the real whatever it is that you're producing, whether that's a website, or content, or YouTube series, etc. And here is another quote from uh, Eric Raymond from the Cathedral and the Bazaar. Users are wonderful things to have, and not just because they demonstrate that you are serving a need, that you've done something right. Properly cultivated, they can become co-developers. And this is uh, of fundamental importance, especially when it comes to the stage of prototyping. Please make use of that opportunity uh, and open yourself to getting uh, user feedback as early as possible. Um, look for it, in fact, when it comes to uh, producing your prototyping models, because this saves you a lot of time down the track. And when you're looking for that uh, user feedback, uh, it's really important that you resist the urge to uh, defend your model. Um, many students make the mistake of uh, presenting a prototype or, or let's say a series of prototypes and uh, testing them with users and then uh, defending them across the board uh, you know in a, in a sense of you know how dare you criticize my work or you know you are wrong this is actually this is working that way why aren't you getting it etc etc so if your users communicate that something is unclear it means that it's unclear right so uh, take notes of uh, how your prototypes are being received what works what doesn't work what could be improved, what needs to be changed. Uh, specifically look for reactions to your, uh, to your content and uh, try and return back to the drawing board in terms of new ideas. This is the value of prototyping. And involving users uh, in the uh, earliest uh, stages of prototyping is uh, also important because uh, you can use users to uh, diagnose issues, diagnose problems, as Eric Raymond again indicates here, uh, suggest fixes, uh, improve uh, the code or the content or whatever it is that you're making far more quickly than you could unaided. Um, why? Because you have a number of users uh, providing feedback on the same uh, object, on the same artifact. And this in turn brings me to my next point, uh, which is uh, of fundamental importance when it comes to understanding this stage. Uh, and it is obviously that prototyping is iterative. So what does this actually mean? This is a, a really important concept that uh, all of you should understand. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it stands that this is a cycle in its own right, that uh, once you uh, produce a prototype, once you model something uh, and you uh, let it encounter an audience, encounter users, you should be able, you should be ready to go back to uh, the drawing board and uh, remake that prototype, right? So if you adopt this mindset, you will save a tremendous amount of time down the track in terms of uh, um, figuring out what is it that you're doing wrong, in terms of figuring out possible bugs, possible issues, in terms of figuring out how to reach your audience better. So part of the concept of FIST, right? Fail, uh, uh, fast, inexpensive, simple, tiny is uh, encapsulated here in that you want to be going through prototyping as often as possible, as early as possible, uh, in order to save yourself uh, uh, both time and effort and resources down the track when the ma making of the actual project or the actual content or series or whatever uh, starts where you're already on, uh, on a sort of a, a plane of certainty, as it were, in terms of what you're making. Uh, you don't want to be discovering issues at that stage. You want to be discovering them now. And there's, a, again, another fantastic uh, point from Eric Raymond here, uh, where he points out that you often don't really understand the problem until after the first time you implement a solution. The second time, maybe, you know enough to do it right. So if you want to get it right, be ready to start over at least once. So he's pointing exactly at this uh, element of prototyping. You want to be approaching it iteratively uh, with the mindset that you will figure out uh, issues along the track and you will need to start over again. 
and uh, in our terms this is best encapsulated by by uh, this concept that you should be treating prototyping as a uh, fist opportunity to hashtag FIFA so as a fast inexpensive simple tiny opportunity to fail early and fail often really important to approach the prototyping stage with this mindset as opposed to doing things as one-off in isolation failing possibly and uh, um, uh, giving up or alternatively um, approaching things in one-off as a one-off in isolation uh, not failing because you haven't encountered any resistance and continuing into the void without encountering resistance without actually having any feedback right this is a dead end as well even though it gives you the illusion of progression the illusion of linear development you're operating in a vacuum it's a dead end right so uh, treat prototyping as an opportunity to test as quickly as possible gain feedback as quickly as possible um, and fail early and fail often right this is encapsulated also in uh, the by now very familiar concept to all of you from Eric Raymond release early, release often, listen to your customers or in other terms again from him given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow which is again one of the classic mantras of the open source uh, movement you want to have uh, enough people, enough uh, uh, users with some sort of engagement looking at the process looking at the content, looking at the project that you're working on uh, and figuring out issues in collaboration with you. A reminder also that uh, you can prototype and you can advance tremendously in the prototyping stage by using design fiction. We talked about this in the previous lecture on ideation. Uh, this uh, spills over, as it were, this, this uh, concept of design fiction and uh, the, the process that you can uh, undergo by using it spills over in terms of uh, prototyping. Why? Because it allows you to simulate interactions and experiences. Even though this, whatever it is that you're going to be making in terms of design fiction, is not exactly uh, a model of what you will be making in, in real terms, if you're trying to capture specific uh, interactions, specific experiences, that simulation is really helpful for that. So uh, design fiction also saves you tremendous amount of time. So uh, this speculative approach to making, and that's as speculative as it gets, obviously, uh, is really helpful because, again, it allows you to hashtag fist and hashtag FIFA. Um, remember, the, uh, the key concept here comes from Julian Blicker, um, and uh, the, he explains it very nicely in terms of making the unreal seem real, even routine and plain. So you want to start with something uh, uh, highly speculative and inserting it in a very plain, very pedestrian, uh, everyday environment and uh, uh, trying to observe possible interactions, possible experiences. Why? Because uh, these are specifications for imagining, right? Tangible, materialized prototypes that live in between fact and fiction and are both speculative and possible. Yes, yeah, specifications for imagining. Importantly, and that's also a point that students uh, often overlook when it comes to the uh, potential of design fiction, this approach allows you to unlock uh, new ideas in terms of how you could make things, how you could position things, the kind of users you should be uh, approaching, etc. etc. The design fiction separates you, as it were, from the linear thinking that we are also conditioned with. It, uh, it uh, kind of pushes you to think along different tracks. So it's really important to experiment with that. Treat it as a way to experiment um, in terms of your prototyping and in terms of uh, uh, possible uh, future trajectories for your project. All right, so let's summarize where we are in terms of prototyping. And the three rules of thumb that uh, I think are really important for all of you to take on board are first, build early, build often. So that's a, again a variation on a uh, motto of fail early, fail often. It's important to build as early as possible and as often as possible. Build prototypes, right? Hashtag Bibo. Uh, feel free to use that. Um, when you build, build for engagement. Do not make content, do not build prototypes uh, without a specific uh, purpose, without a specific uh, reason, without specific uh, vector for testing. Uh, 
aim to generate interactions, aim to generate specific reactions from your users, which you're looking for. This is what prototypes are for, right? And the more you prototype, the earlier you prototype, right? Again, hashtag Bibo, uh, the better understanding you would have of your users and the better understanding you will have of the trajectory of your project. Gotta feedback and do not get attached, do not get uh, in any way uh, linked uh, permanently with your current model, right? So release uh, your prototype, let it uh, get a feedback and uh, uh, drop it, start working on a new one. You're looking for early feedback and you're looking for um, an understanding of the way your audience engages with the object that you've made. You are looking for specific experiences that your audience um, undergoes when interacting with your object, whatever it is that you're making. Look for that. Do not get attached to the models you are prototyping. All right. And uh, the final quote that I want to, uh, to give you uh, towards the end of this lecture is again from Eric Raymond. It sort of encapsulates the entire process of uh, rapid prototyping. Um, and the quote is, Often, the most striking and innovative solutions come from realizing that your concept of the problem was wrong. Um, why do I say that this encapsulates the entire process of prototyping? Because it captures very well uh, the end point of a successful prototyping uh, stage where uh, through interactions with your users, through uh, um, releasing a number of prototypes, you figured out that something is wrong when it comes to your problem statement. So you've uh, gone back through the ideation all the way back to the uh, defining stage and you've discovered that the problem statement you generated uh, needs altering, right? So this is actually a very successful prototyping stage when you've discovered that something is wrong with your problem statement. Why successful? Because you've saved yourself tremendous amount of time, effort and resources in figuring out very early that uh, you need to iterate through your problem statement. That's it from me. Thank you all from, for listening. Um, as usual, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter at TedMeetYou and uh, see you online.